Why do I go to the theater? It's not a question I ask myself very often, but it's one I kept returning to as I mulled over Dragon Spring Phoenix Rise, a show whose title I can only assume came from a drunken game of Mad Libs. It's currently running at The Shed in New York City, and it has got one heck of a sales pitch. A kung fu stage musical with original songs by Sia and co-written by the duo behind Kung Fu Panda 2. I haven't even seen Kung Fu Panda 2, but I would be lying if that didn't increase the intrigue. So it was a foregone conclusion that I would be seeing whatever this thing was for myself. Hello, by the way, and welcome to the Week I Review. You can call me a guy who chose to do karate while his friends did Kung Fu. And today, I'm talking about Dragon Spring Phoenix Rise. The shed, which opened just a few months ago in the Hudson Yards area, is an imposing structure, and the McCourt Theater an amazing space. It's huge and open and Park Avenue Armory-esque, which is fitting since the artistic director, Alex Poots, left the armory for the shed. It makes you feel small and the performance enormous. Appropriately, the set here is a cavern of sorts. A rocky plateau stands above and behind the main staging area. There's a metal walkway, too, and a ladder that folks slide down from time to time, but it's mostly about that rock. After an intense but wordless introduction scene, the action begins in earnest. We see a man in tactical-type gear look down over and instruct his disciples, a chorus, in the art of kung fu. They're dancing, but they're not singing. As it turns out, despite Sia's prominent billing, she didn't do very much. This is not a traditional musical. Looking at creator Chen Shi Zhang's impressive list of credits, I shouldn't have been surprised. As it turns out, this is the same man who made Monkey Journey to the West, a circus opera that reminds me in many ways of Dragon Spring Phoenix Rise and was itself significant for the involvement of the musical mind behind Gorillaz, Damon Albarn. And I've spent far too much time over the past few days trying to understand the difference between musical and opera and see if there's some way that this could be classified as the latter, because despite having very little singing, it feels more like something I would see in Lincoln Center where I saw Journey to the West than on Broadway. Though thinking that through to a logical conclusion, Dragon Spring actually shares more with the Nutcracker than it does the Book of Mormon. It is largely a narrative dance performance, but these are the moves of martial artists. The show was inspired by early tapes of Bruce Lee auditions where he demonstrated the beauty of Kung Fu, and with hundreds or even thousands of hours of preparation under their belts, the performers in Dragon Spring Phoenix Rise are able to do the same. But if I'm being honest, the impact is diminished when the collective movements turn adversarial. I think stage combat is fascinating, and I appreciate the emphasis on safety. You know, it's great for everyone except the audience, because those fights are never particularly convincing. In Dragon Spring, this is most true with regards to the worst casting decision of the show, white man David Patrick Kelly as Lone Peak, the wise Grandmaster character. Kelly is an award-winning actor, and that's fine, but he's also 68 years old and definitely not trained in martial arts. In the moments where he is supposed to be teaching others a lesson in humility through a show of force using his cane, you know, something you have seen in basically every martial arts movie featuring a wise teacher ever. You are forced to pretend like the action hasn't slowed to a crawl while an old man valiantly but ineffectively follows basic choreography. And people we have seen do some awesome stunts must throw themselves about in a genuinely ridiculous fashion. It doesn't work. But even when it's among the more talented performers, hand-to-hand -hand stage combat just doesn't look great, especially when in a sustained sequence, and especially, especially when it's not 
just a sustained sequence like in a martial arts showcase, but part of a bigger show. Though the rest of the fights aren't as awkward as those involving Kelly, they all lack the fluidity that characterizes both the individual movements and the martial art in general. Weapons, swords, and staffs are a sort of solution because they are flowier when handled right and flashier regardless, and so I expected them to make an appearance and was not disappointed. And those fights did tend to be more enjoyable. The final confrontation in particular I found quite impressive. Though I didn't find it very meaningful, because the weakest aspect of Dragon Spring Phoenix Rise is its storytelling. At around 90 minutes, it is far too short. This is an epic saga taking place over nearly two decades, and each side of the intermission could and should have been doubled in length. And it's not like Chen Shi Zhang is afraid of extended runtimes. His breakout work was a full length revival of the 1598 opera The Peony Pavilion, a production that was 20 hours long. Dragon Spring clearly yearns for some of that extra space to tell its story. This couldn't have been properly told with 90 minutes of nothing but rapidly spoken dialogue, let alone normal speed dialogue that must stop any time the show wants to become a dancing showcase, or remember it's supposed to be a musical and have a performer sing one of Sia's three, yes, just three, original songs. That whole thing is so genuinely bizarre, by the way. A couple of times, Sia herself plays on the soundtrack, including a remixed version of The Greatest, during which one of the actors, like, oddly times saying, I've got stamina, with the track. But by minute 30, I just assumed no one would ever break into song in World. And then someone did. And I couldn't figure out for the life of me why then. It would be just as long before we'd get another one of those. Like, the structuring of the music lacks motivation and is just really odd. Dragon Spring's narrative has been distilled way past its essence. Everything is so condensed, and scenes just start and stop in places that often feel totally random and then pick up in the next months later, and I couldn't help but want to know what took place in the interim or see some interrogation of a given character's mindset. You know, the things musicals use their songs for. But... There's a caveat, which is that I wouldn't necessarily have wanted all that much more of this particular brand of storytelling because the writing is just dumb and bland and makes me assume that Kung Fu Panda 2 was a pretty hard step back from what I remember being a fairly enjoyable original. Maybe it's actually a blessing in disguise that so little time is devoted to character development. Maybe it's better that I'm left wanting more than regretting what I got. But I'll be honest. None of that really matters. I was very aware of all of it while watching, alongside other issues like how the first party scene in what is ostensibly a busy club looks ridiculous because the chorus isn't nearly big enough to fill the area. But I could push it all to the back of my mind because of just how striking the production is. The question of why I go to the theater is pretty significant for me because I do it a fair amount. My favorite thing about New York is just how easy it is to see shows here, especially while I'm under 30. And I try to take advantage of that. For every performance I review on this channel, I attend at least two or three more, but... I get snail mail and emails and push notifications and Facebook ads, and I pass flyers and billboards and bus ads every single day, selling fascinating sounding shows that I don't have the time, energy, or money for. There's just so much to see that working out what I can and should go to sometimes feels like a part-time job. But it's worth it, because when theater is at its best, there is nothing better. And I can pinpoint when Dragon Spring Phoenix Rise became that, when every concern I had fell away. 
It's towards the end of Act 1. In a moment of pause from the drama that was playing out on stage, I decided to look up. Maybe I saw some movement out of the corner of my eye, or maybe I was just stretching my neck. But my jaw dropped, because coming down on wires from the enormously high ceiling was the entire chorus, where they may well have been for minutes by that point. They moved seemingly in slow motion as patterned lights played across them. I looked back at the stage and then up again, and I was just struck by the beauty of the thing. Soon after they reached the ground, a ceremony started, a resurrection. Water began to pump up onto the stage, creating the literal dragon spring around a character who had been taken too soon. The chorus danced. And soon the water came up to their feet and then past it, and the dancing became more than just a series of movements. It became music itself. I've always appreciated tap dancing, but the actual sound of tap shoes against a stage is not my favorite. What was happening here was reminiscent of that, but so much more visceral. The sound wasn't coming from special shoes, but from the clashing movements of body and water. And as the center of the ceremony began to rise into the air herself, the dancing became faster. And even as you watched her rise higher and higher, you could still hear the sounds of the chorus dancing beneath her. The blackout took my breath away. This was unlike anything I had ever seen before. An incredible combination of sight and sound and staging. Pure, perfect theater. The thing that I hope to see every time an usher hands me a playbill and points me to my seat. And though it was just one scene and nothing before or after quite matches it, its effects linger. Every negative, and we've established there are a few, is inevitably offset by the moment where Dragon Spring Phoenix Rise showed me something new. 7.7 .7 out of 10. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, that's great. If not, I'm sorry. If you want to see more, please subscribe. I hope to see you next week.